Hello, I'm Christopher Floyd. And I'm Gwen Gregory. Welcome to another installment of IE News. In this edition, our senior producer, Sharice Appel, interviews financial aid and veterans affairs advisor, James Martinez, to provide us with information on the financial aid process. Are you interested in cooking? Stick around to catch my co-anchor's interview with Joshua Cooper from LBCC's Culinary Arts Program. So stay tuned for more. You won't want to miss what we have cooked up for you on this edition of IE News. Welcome to our first story. Do you have a passion for cooking? My co-anchor interviewed LBCC culinary arts student Joshua Cooper to gain his perspective on the program and the new culinary arts facilities. Hi, I'm Christopher Floyd, host of the Kitchen Sink podcast and radio show, airing Friday nights at 8.15, right across the hallway from here on KLBC Radio. Now, if you've listened to my show, you know I'm passionate about music. Live it, love it, breathe it, need it. What you may not know is that I'm also a serious foodie. And if you've got that crazy love for food, not just eating it, but making it, preparing it, then please meet Joshua Cooper. How are you doing today, Josh? Good, thank you. Uh, Josh or Joshua? Joshua's fine. Jo Joshua's fine. Thank you very much for coming on, for taking time out and coming over. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, first things first. Congratulations are in order, I hear, because this is your final semester in the Culinary Arts Program here at LBCC. Uh, you have a certificate coming in June, correct? That is correct. Glad to be uh, finishing up. It's been, seems like it's been a while coming. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, been, it's been two years, yeah, right? It has it's a two-year program, years. final semester. Um, looking back, tell me about your expectations of the program from when you went into it versus the sort of reality of the situation, how things actually turned out. Oh, definitely. Um, I, I think uh, coming in, I thought it was just gonna be, you know, kind of a bunch of kids standing around a kitchen making some food, um, but there's actually a lot of, a lot of education behind what, what we do in the, in the kitchens over here. Um, making a lot of really, really great dishes that I, I, didn't, I didn't foresee. Yeah, oh, yeah, well see, that's good, that's good. Cause, uh, <laughs> Uh, for okay, so now, for those with an interest in cooking, mm -hmm. what can they expect from the program? Um, <laughs> to learn a lot. I think that would be the, the the top expectation. There is there are so many aspects of of the kitchen, and they all get covered pretty much in our program here. There's there's like 17 classes mm -hmm. uh, available, and and they pretty much run the gamut. Uh, so. Uh, Tell me about the prerequisites. Talk to me about some of the basics of the program. What needs to be done What before they come in, if anything? Sure, uh, first things first is the, the, the one like pre-required class for the whole program is, uh, is safety sanitation. So you can go into the kitchen and, and know how to, how to work in the kitchen safely and not contaminate your food or make anybody sick, things like that. Uh, then, then from that you go into the introduction to skills and techniques where you get some of your basic knife skills, cooking methods, things like that. Right. Now, in terms of being hands-on, how, 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 how is the program? You getting your hands dirty up in there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every, pretty much every culinary class is a lab class. There's, uh, um, most of them are about six hours long. You spend maybe an hour, hour and a half in lecture. All the rest of the time is in the kitchen actually making food. Oh, right on. Oh, okay, okay. That, that's probably the way it should be. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> now, uh, I want you to talk about the evolution of the program because you, uh, the program, just went from being over here in the E-building, rather cramped spaces, to a new $44 million complex over in the uh, Math Culinary Building, the V-building. Tell them what that was like before, being over in the E-building and we'll talk after that about what it was, what it's like where you're at now. Sure, it's um, wow. That was a, like you said, cramped. Is that's that's a very nice way to put it. <laughs> Serious <laughs> statement. <laughs> exactly. We uh, again, 17 classes, and all of us more or less shared one kitchen over there in the building. And there were there were days where, uh, like classes that I was in, we were getting out trying to clean up the kitchen. We had a whole new class already coming in trying to set up their kitchen. I mean, just students on top of each other all day, 
<laughs> we were, and, and the thing is we were sharing, it was both the culinary and the bakery pastry department all sharing the one space, which made it a challenging. Yeah, to say the least, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, I know what that's like. Because now there's something else going on completely different. Now you're over here in the V building and you've got four kitchens? Four seven, brands? seven kitchens total. Seven kitchens. So, so, so let's see what we got here. We got, we got the production kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, skills. Correct. Uh, bakery, mm -hmm. and I know I'm missing one. What's that last there's one? There's the pastry kitchen. Uh, bakery pastry, two separate kitchens. Um, then there's a smaller kitchen off the production that actually feeds the bistro, uh, the kitchen for the restaurant. And then we have a, a specialty bakery kitchen, which uh, I believe they're trying to focus on like gluten-free, allergen-aware products, things like that. The, uh, the, new, uh, uh, the new digs over there are really nice. Uh, if, you, if you like to cook, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've watched some of these cooking shows and you look at these kitchens and you go, wow, that's what I want. That's what's available here. Exactly. These things are nice, they're spacious, brand new ovens, mm -hmm. brand new everything over there. Oh, indeed, everything is, is state of the art. Um, and it's so funny, some of us coming from the, the old kitchen where we, you know, had, had some challenges and we have all this space, this amazing, you know, equipment. We half the time don't know what to do with ourselves and so we end up creating some, some really unique dishes with all that equipment. Now you've talked before about uh, the types of food that are made uh, or, or that one can uh, make over in the culinary arts program. I want you to talk about some of those a little bit uh, because it ranges from basic introductory to culinary to vegetarian specialty cuisine. Uh, talk more about the, the range of food that one can make, that oh, one certainly. can prepare. Uh, Absolutely. In the program. Um, yeah, of course, the, the introduction to culinary, and that's, that's a lot of the, the basics. And you get some of the, the classical French techniques. Um, you get your, your standard co cooking methods, you know, how to grill and fry and saute, things like that. Um, and then it definitely goes on. We have the, the specialty cuisines, the world cuisines, where uh, we have an Asian class, and you go through each region in Asia, North China, South China, Vietnam. Oh, really? Indeed. And every week you do a, a dish specific to that region of Asia. And the same with the American regional, we take different, break up the United States and you do have uh, like New England and then Southern style, New Mexico, West Coast foods. Okay, and, and, and now is, is some of that is what they're serving over in the bistro because in addition to the new $44 million building, I think part of it is a bistro that's been set aside. And, and, and talk to me about the bistro because there's some nice uh, uh, food being produced over there. That is true. Um, it, that's the thing, we kind of, um, we switch it up every two weeks, we change our menu. Uh, this week we're actually in Asia, we've got uh, a five spice braised short rib with some kimchi, uh, indeed some, some Taiwanese noodles, we're doing a little stir fry, some rice dishes. And uh, that's the thing, we'll, we'll do it, um, it just every, every couple of weeks we change it out to get a different region. We started the semester with West Coast, um, so basic, you know, kind of some seafood, some California cuisine. Yeah. And we'll go, just go through the whole gamut. I think we're going to end with Mediterranean at the end of the semester. Okay. Now, one thing I noticed was that there's also a lot of uh, emphasis based on baking. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not talking about taking it and shoving it in the oven. Uh, we're talking about baking, bakery. Absolutely. Why so much? Because if there's 17, and I don't expect you to answer that necessarily as far as why, mm -hmm. but uh, if there's 17 classes, I think almost half of them involve baking, mm -hmm. uh, a bakery. What's going, you've been through that. What, I, what's going on I've, with that? I've been through some of the baking classes. I'm, I'm primarily a culinarian, but we, they want the students in the program to be a well-rounded culinarian, to have these skills of a, of a baker or a pastry chef, as well as being able to, you know, make a stir fry. Um, and it, it's a lot about just getting, getting all the knowledge into the student. And in addition to the bistro, we also have the, the bakery and pastry shop over there as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some nice stuff going on over there. Some really good food, and the prices aren't that bad either. Oh, they're really reasonable. So yeah, if you've got an afternoon to kill, uh, and that's uh, what uh, Tuesday and Wednesdays. Tuesday and Wednesday lunch service from 11:30 to 1:30, um, and we have three courses. You have a, a choice between your appetizer and entree, um, and then a plate of dessert. Uh, three courses, $15, and it's a uh, great, great food. 
You also work at The Attic. That is correct. Did this program, the Culinary Arts Program at Long Beach City College help you for that? I, I wouldn't be at The Attic without this program. I can say that. Um, just the ba even, even the basic skills on, on how to hold a knife properly. Um, all, all of those things prepared me for going into, into a real kitchen and, and you know, experiencing the, the realities of it. Last semester here at Long Beach City College in the Culinary Arts Program. What's next for Joshua Cooper? Um, after this, I, I do plan on coming back for the AS. Um, just have a few more GE classes to take care of for right that. And, uh, and after that, just keep working. I'm, I may uh, go on for a bachelor's in hospitality, something like that, some transfer credits, but uh, just keep cooking. Uh, if you're interested in The Attic, you can find The Attic online at theatticonbroadway.com, theatticonbroadway.com. Uh, if you're interested in the culinary arts program here, go to lbcc.edu slash culinary uh, to find more information, detailed information on the culinary arts program here at Long Beach City College. You can find, if you're on Facebook, go to LBCC Bistro, LBCC B-I-S-T-R-O, uh, and check out the page there. I am Christopher Floyd, your host. This has been IE News. Take care and have a good one. Thanks, Chris, for that amazing interview. Sports anchor Noah Russell updates us on all we need to know for the NBA playoffs and the upcoming Major League Baseball season. The Lakers played the Washington Wizards on Easter Sunday and lost. Lakers guard Jordan Clarkson tried to steal the ball towards the end of the first half but came up short, leaving the Lakers down 50-44. John Wall led the way for the Wizards with 17 points and 6 assists. For the second straight quarter, Washington topped 25 points while holding the Lakers under 20, taking a 77-59 lead into the fourth quarter. Kobe Bryant scored 17 points on 6 for 15, shooting in his final game against the Wizards. Up next for the Lakers, the Miami Heat, then the Houston Rockets. Grab your mitts and your jerseys because the Major League Baseball regular season has begun. The Angels open this season at home against the Chicago Cubs, followed by the Texas Rangers before taking to the road against the Oakland A's. The Dodgers, meanwhile, open their 2016 campaign on the road against the San Diego Padres and then the San Francisco Giants before coming home to take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's all the sports we have for now. Until next time, I'm Noah Russell with your IA News Sports. Long Beach City College radio and television program with state-of-the-art equipment, learn directing, television studio functions, and more. All in our state-of-the-art, full HD radio and television studio at Long Beach City College. Don't miss out. Enroll today at www.lbcc.edu. Some students are very active on and off campus. Don Williams interviews ASB cabinet member Alejandro Lomelli on his position as the student trustee. Hello, I am Don Williams, and sitting next to me is one of the very important members of ASB, that is the Associated Student Body, Alejandro Lomelli, and he is the student trustee. Mm -hmm. That means that you handle money, right? No, no, no. That is um, the student representative on the board of trustees. So oh. Yeah. Oh, so you're not just involved with the ASB. You're also involved with the, uh, with the, the board, board of trustees. Correct. Wow. What does all that entail? Um, a lot of meetings, I'll be honest. Um, but there are a lot of administrative sides to it that the ASB doesn't handle. So I think that's, that's the main difference. Such as? Sure. Like um, during board meetings, we'll talk about um, specific contracts, we'll talk about how the college is doing, whether it's academics or whether it's doing like specific areas like counseling and an administration area like admi ugh, admissions and records, while as opposed to ASB, we, mo we focus more on student-oriented ideas or projects, which... One intern runs the college. Correct. The other intern deals runs. directly with the students. Yes. Which part of it is it that you are most invested in? Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, I'd like to think I'm mostly invested in both, but I've seen that my role of student trustee makes me focus more on the college as a whole. Um, I mean, I'm definitely all about the students, and I want to see student perspective and student support in a lot of things I do. Um, but I, I, for one, I'd, I'd like to see myself handle the administrative stuff because they definitely need student input on administrative decisions. Now, as a student, mm -hmm. where did you start in order for you to achieve this particular level of, 
I guess, uh, induction or uh, into ASB? Sure. So this is actually my fourth semester here at Long Beach. Okay. Um, I started back here in the spring of, I believe that's 14. Um, so it was my second week of school and I was walking around and they had a special election during that day. So I, I decided to vote and during that day they said, hey, we have some positions open for ASB, why aren't you interested in applying? So I quickly applied, I took the position and I stayed that full year and as a rep of legislative affairs, so I handled uh, legislative things, looked at assembly bills, senate bills, things that brought down from the state that would trickle down to our college. And then after that I decided that my skills would best be used as a student trustee for this year. So what you're talking about is actual state functions. Correct. In terms of junior college or college legislation? Correct. There's a lot of assembly bills that are out on the floor that have been discussing and are going to impact a lot of students. Um, there's a lot of changes, uh, bog fee waiver for one, there's changes with Cal grants that are trickling down. So there's a lot of things that are happening for the state that students really need to focus on. That's what I want to do as student trustee. Then you have full knowledge about those things that can aid our fellow students, you and I are both students here, mm -hmm. in getting not just academically prepared, but economically prepared in order to attend the school. Correct. What would you suggest, or how would you suggest a student, brand new, get themselves actively involved in just getting registered in school, and then we can go from there? Sure. So. Um Aside from obviously registering, I definitely recommend them to attend some of our meetings. Um, both our ASB meetings or attend one of the board meetings. There's so much information that goes throughout those meetings that it's literally just a first step. You're taking your first step into student government and really showing what the student voice can do. So you are a big proponent of student government. Correct, yes. And you just walked in in your first semester and you got involved. Was this a desire that you knew you had, or is this something that tweaked your mind when you saw it? So I was involved in high school. Um, I took a year off of college. I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and then when I came to Long Beach, I was looking into their, their program for, for law enforcement, which is why I chose to come to Long Beach, because they have a great Long Beach Police Department, um, and a great transfer to CSULB. Um, but when I first came here, I did, I did not want to get involved. Um, I think the reason that I decided to get involved was because I saw the passion in the student leaders that we had here. At that time, um, I had a friend, her name was Lauren, who um, was the vice president at the time, and she was so passionate. She was telling students to, hey, show your voice on this, show your voice on that. I want to hear your opinion on this. And that's what really, I guess, inspired me to be part of it. And I want to be that person for someone else. And you want to share that passion about involvement with all the other students out there. I do. Uh, I understand that there is a program now for high school students that when they come here, at least for right now, their first year of LBCC is paid for. The Long Beach College Promise, yes. Okay, please tell us what that entails and if you don't mind, tell our people that may be watching how they can get their children involved, how if it's the child themselves that is watching, I'm sorry, not the child, <laughs> the student involved can get themselves connected with that in order to make at least their first year a lot easier economically. Sure, so the Long Beach College Promise, it literally expanded this year. Um, primarily it's a system between the K through 12 system and then it would go into Long Beach City College and hopefully transfer into CSULB. Um, it's a pathway program. It's, we have summer bridge programs for those students that are coming into Long Beach City College and we offer like a few week courses where they would have counseling and they would have priority registration. But to be enrolled or be a part of that program, you have to be in the district. So they're looking into um, the high schools in this district, the Long Beach City College District, to start off. And then now, which where um, President Oakley gave during his speech, the Long Beach College Promise, they expanded the services or the financial, I guess, the financial support from one semester to a whole year. So it's really awesome for students. They get their first year paid for. They have the summer bridge program if they decide to take advantage of it. So they know where to get started and they know how to progress in the future. For those students who, say for instance, came out of high school, got their high school diplomas, but are not maybe academically strong enough to survive on their own here at LBCC or in any junior college, are there programs that can assist them in becoming more acclimated to college? That is a um, great topic. We, so during my last board meeting, um, we got a presentation on our counseling department. 
Um, so we got a few updates on what's being, what's being changed and what's being revamped within our um, counseling. So we have like online counseling and things like that. Um, but specifically, they're referring to the Long Beach College Promise students, those who were involved in that program. So they're looking at implementing um, like check-ins, so see how they're doing progressively every, se every semester. They would do progress reports as well. So they would say, hey, this is how you're doing. This is what you need to do to progress. And they want to definitely, um, they want to definitely show how important it is to meet with a counselor because um, I know we offer a lot of programs, but if a student feels uncomfortable with a certain class and they could decide to take another for the replacement, but um, program-wise, I think that would probably be the best. I mean, counseling is literally where it's at when it comes to taking your classes. So you're saying that in this program, there is follow-up? They're going to be looking into it, yes. So we got, we got an update two weeks ago at our board meeting that they were looking at implementing it. Wow, yeah. that is really a very forward-thinking type of program. Where do you believe the education that at least starts here where would you like to see your education go? Where would you see yourself in a final position? So I'll hopefully, well, I should be transferring out within the spring of next year, and I'm going into Cal State Long Beach for sure. That's 100% sure. I'm going into criminal justice there. Hope to get my bachelor's degree and eventually get my master's. Um, after that, I'll go into the police force, law enforcement, and hopefully uh, work my way up there. But that would be my end goal. Okay. I have to say again, you are a student. Correct. here and you came from like most of the people coming from flat into what it is that you're doing right now you as a student accomplished this and I'd like to shake your hand congratulations thank you I'm Don Williams and standing next to me is Alejandro and this is IE News welcome to the radio and television department at Long Beach City College here you will learn to make anything that ends up on your television or radio Working in the studio is like some kind of cool video game. You man your controls while coordinating over headphones, watching the screens carefully. Then when the target is in the right spot, you push the red button. Only instead of zombies, it's celebrities. Whether you like playing single player or multiplayer using a PC or console, or you just think all this stuff looks cool, then check us out at LBCC. It's good to know that students are active in the political process of our college. Our veterans are an important aspect of the LBCC community. Sharice Appel interviews financial aid and veterans affair advisor James Martinez on his position within the veterans office and provides an insight into the financial aid process. Hi, thank you and welcome to another installment of IE News. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing James Martinez, who is the financial aid advisor and veterans affair here at Long Beach City College. How are you today? I'm doing well, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. So as a financial aid advisor and the Veterans Affairs Advisor, what is your, like, what does your job title entail? Okay, all right. So um, technically, Veterans Services Office uh, isn't funded by anyone. Uh -huh. It's not funded federally. It's not funded statewide. So they had to stick it in someone else's mm. uh, department. And, and uh, financial aid, about 25 years ago, had a director that was a veteran, and he felt very strongly about it. So he volunteered to have uh, financial aid take over Veterans Services Office. So... Uh, all veterans go through the financial aid office now uh, because there's no funding technically we're all financial aid officers on, on one level or another and uh, my my job as the financial aid um, advisor to the veterans is that I have um, full range of professional judgment when it comes to their their financial services and full range of professional judgment when it comes to their GI Bill so right now I, I run the veteran services office and I assist them with their financial aid. Now, 20 of my hours are dedicated to the, to the veterans and 20 of my hours are dedicated to general population students. So for 20 hours, I'm also in the financial aid office um, seeing students on regular appointments to discuss their more detailed problems that mm -hmm. the FAFSA doesn't cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is it recommended that every student applies for financial aid? Because I know that there are students who apply mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not approved, so they right. kind of just toss it on the back burner. Right. Are there like other right. options for them? Um, yeah, there's, there's a multitude of options and, and it is always recommended. It's always recommended that students apply for financial aid. Uh, the majority of financial aid is free. Mm -hmm. The majority of financial aid, uh, it, you don't have to pay back. Uh, and it, it, it is all dependent upon your financial status uh, the year previous or sometimes even two years previous. And that's one of the reasons why we, we encourage all students to apply. Even if they had been uh, 
denied initially. We still recommend that you apply for a variety of reasons. It could be that your status now is different and we can take that into consideration. Or it could be that a year or two ago we were required to look at your parents' information but now we're no longer required right. to. Right? Every scenario is different and the worst that, that we could tell you or the federal government or the state government could tell you is we're sorry but unfortunately we're unable to assist you. Now, even beyond that, we still recommend that the students apply for financial aid because it's also the eligibility and criteria for other, for other scholarships, for other loans, for other grants located here at Long Beach City College. Okay. And then does, so that goes into my other question, mm -hmm. does LBCC offer grants and loans? Because I've seen that option on the website. Right. But how can a student go about that? Because I, for instance, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. didn't know that the school offered grants and loans. So what... What's the process for that, and how can they um, kind of assess that, the student kind of assess that right. for themselves? Okay, so, so the first thing you'd have to do is apply for the FAFSA online. The FAFSA stands for a Free Application for Federal Student Aid, um, hence free, first off, uh, fafsa.ed.gov. If you go to a fafsa.com, mm -hmm. you can fill out the same form, but it'll charge you money, right. which doesn't make sense because, again, the first word is free. Right. Uh, but we, we utilize that as their criteria to determine how much financial need a student has. So um, we are not necessarily clear with the, the equation because that's done on the federal side, but students input how many people are in their household, they input um, their background information, they input the financial information they have, they input where they're receiving money from, because where you receive money from is important, whether it's a, 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 a wage that is earned through work, or whether it is um, CalFresh, for instance, if it's SNAP, if it's, if it's uh, a child support, those are all different types of incomes that are weighed differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number is spit out. This number is compared to the cost of attendance. And the cost of attendance at every college is different. Here at our college, it's about $19,000. So we would say that in order to come to school here for a year, it's going to cost about $19,000 when you're dealing with uh, rent, when you're dealing with um, food, when you're dealing with transportation costs, yeah. on top of the tuition, mm -hmm. on top of the books, on top of all that. So we try to compare what your family can actually contribute to college versus what the cost of attendance is, and that will produce what we refer to as need. We utilize that need to see what you're eligible for whether it's federal grants, whether it's state grants, whether it's loans, mm -hmm. or whether it's other, other opportunities such as uh, the EOPS program or even scholarships. Right. So the first step is definitely to apply for the FAFSA. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several different types of loans. Uh, here at Long Beach City College, we only have uh, two. We only have the subsidized and unsubsidized loan. The subsidized loan is subsidized through the federal government. Mm -hmm. So um, money is lent out to the student and the government will pay the interest, and they will continue to pay the interest up until three months after the, school, uh, after the student gets out of school, uh -huh. which is fairly helpful. I mean, right. the idea is that as long as you're going to school, you're getting trained, whether to, to receive a, a degree or to, or, or to have job training. And the idea is that even after you get out of school, you're not gonna have a job immediately. So they, they try to give you some type of breathing. Um, so let's say, just hypothetically, you take out a loan for $6,000 mm -hmm. in your sophomore year, you have two more years of college, uh, and it's still the same amount. It's still $6,000. And then you graduate. Yay, you get, a, you get your bachelor's degree. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. Then they give you three months to essentially find a job, which is fairly reasonable. At, at least it's not immediate. Uh, and then soon after that, you start getting phone calls. You start getting letters saying, hey, it's about time to start <laughs> paying your yeah. loan. You don't have to pay it all off, and now interest is going to start accruing. It makes it much more manageable. It makes it much more, much more appealing. Now, there's a limit to how much you can take out. Um, it changes every, every year, uh, but it is around uh, $16,000 for your full-time, lifetime eligibility. Uh, then there's the unsubsidized loans. The unsubsidized loans are through third-party lenders. Uh -huh. Uh, they are approved through, through, some, through some methods of the federal government. Uh, you can take out upwards of $60,000 for a lifetime. Uh, however, interest starts accruing immediately. Mm. And that can be problematic to some students. How, uh, however, again, because you can take out more, sometimes students do elect to do that as well. At Long, at Long Beach City College, we will actually uh, require that you take out a subsidized loan uh -huh. before you take out an unsubsidized loan because it behooves the student more. And we would rather see students uh, you know, having to deal with less debt right. uh, than, than more. Than more, mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much, yeah, thank no you. Problem. I'm Teresa Powell here at IE News. Thanks, Teresa. The information provided can not only help our vets, but the entire student body. 
That's all we have for this week. Also, be sure to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash IE News. If you are interested in becoming a part of the radio and television department here at Long Beach City College, give us a call. 562-938-4892. I'm Gwen Gregory. And I'm Christopher Floyd. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching and, and we'll, we'll see you next time. time.